An ounce, Annie Oakley, and another perfect shot. How she missed a chance to change the world. I'm Jim Fugate, and it's my privilege to share an ounce with you. Have you ever heard of the butterfly effect? That suggestion that proposes that if a butterfly flaps its wings in Colorado, in just the right way, at just the right moment, it sets off a potential set of subtle events, a chain reaction, if you will, that causes a hurricane to blow ashore in Georgia a month later. Butterfly equals hurricane? Yeah, that one might be tough to conceive. But there are a few moments when the difference of tiny fractions of an inch at just the right moment could make a change in world history. Annie Oakley, also known as Little Sure Shot, traveled with Buffalo Bill Cody's Wild West Show. She began her career in the late 1800s and continued through the early 1900s, along with Buffalo Bill, Geronimo, Sitting Bull, and other legends of America's Old West, she traveled through the States and even internationally, thrilling audiences with their spectacle of life in the Old West. Annie Oakley was born Phoebe Ann Mosey on August 13, 1860 in Dark County, Ohio. She had several brothers and sisters, and as her father, Jacob Mosey, passed on early in life, she was tasked with helping her mother to keep a roof over their heads. So she took up her father's Kentucky rifle and began to hunt. Not only was she able to keep meat on the family table, but was so proficient she sold much of the game she bagged to local stores, providing an income for the family. She was such an amazing shot. She was able to pay off the mortgage on the family home when she was 15 years old. In 1884, Phoebe, now known as Annie Oakley, had come to the attention of Wild Bill after competing in a sharpshooting exhibition against Frank Butler. Frank was a pretty good marksman himself, and after she beat him at his own competition, he fell head over heels, and they were married. As Anne could outshoot Frank, he became the assistant, if you will, tossing playing cards or coins into the air, be picked off mid-flight by Annie. Wild Bill caught the newlyweds act and gave them a contract to work with him. She became a big part of the Wild West show for decades. One of her best tricks was to ask a volunteer to come out of the crowd so that she could shoot off the lit end of the cigarette they held in their lips. But nobody ever took her up on the chance, so Frank got the honors of having the cigarette put out by a small piece of lead propelled at just under supersonic speed by a Colt 45, flying by just a few fractions of an inch from his face. <laughs> Gratefully for Frank, Annie didn't miss. In 1890, while on tour in Europe, performing for audiences including royalty, the Wild West show performed in Berlin. Annie made the offer to put someone's cigarette out and Shockingly, Prince Frederick Wilhelm II, crowned Prince of Prussia, accepted the invitation. And this is where the proverbial butterfly flaps its wings. The pressure was on. Annie certainly did not want to blow the prince's head off. The prince placed his partially smoked cigar in his mouth and stood motionless. Annie raised her gun and gently pulled the trigger. Her aim was sure. And before he could flinch, Annie extinguished Prince Wilhelm's half-smoked cigar. Everyone exploded in cheers. The show came to an end, perhaps with a little relief. Annie and her husband, Frank, went on performing around the world with Wild Bill. Prince Wilhelm, well, his father passed and he became Kaiser. Kaiser Wilhelm. And the Kaiser he became a strong proponent of German colonialism and expansion. He alienated most of the rest of Europe with his support of the Boers during the fight against Britain. He strongly supported the expansion and power of the German Navy. And in short, following the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand in Sarajevo, arguably became the strongest proponent of the First World War. 
not many characters were hated more than the Kaiser. Interestingly, historians and political scientists tell us that the First World War, strongly advocated for by the Kaiser, was the single most significant event leading to the Second World War. So ponder this for just a moment. If little sure shot Annie Oakley, instead of extinguishing his cigar, had blown the head off the prince before he became the Kaiser? How many lives would have been saved? If he'd died by receiving a bullet to the head, Kaiser Wilhelm would not have been around to wholeheartedly advance the events leading to the First World War and even the Second World War may not have occurred. Too bad Annie Oakley, while performing in Berlin, didn't deviate from her perfect record and miss the cigar. <laughs> she considered this as well, and a personal letter to the Kaiser, inviting him to volunteer one more time for her to demonstrate her shooting skills. Apparently, the Kaiser did not respond. So, here's the ounce. A butterfly flaps its wings in Colorado. And who could predict that this might be the impetus of a raging Atlantic storm blowing ashore in Georgia? Little sure shot, Annie Oakley, once again, does the right thing and does not miss what she is aiming at in 1890 in Berlin. And a man lives to initiate the horrors of the First and Second World War. We never know which little things will have enormous consequences. A kind smile to a friend changes their mind about arming themselves. A kind word to a child reinforces their faith in people. A very wise man named Alma, many years ago, made this powerfully true statement to his son Helaman. By small and simple things are great things brought to pass, and small means, in many instances, doth confound the wise. Though we might accurately predict, we never know the power of the small things we put out into the world. But as we have the choice, don't you think we ought to share a lot of good things? And that's it. An ounce submitted for your consideration.